Uh, it's cold. And uh, I say this as someone from Colorado where it actually gets cold. Like it's really, really cold in Colorado at times. And uh, I used to make fun of my cousins who would come out from California and they're like, I need a jacket when it's like 60 degrees out. It's cold. I don't know what the temperature is, but like my ears hurt and uh, I'm a little bit struggling with it. Like when the wind's not going, I'm okay, but I have totally, totally become a very weak person when it comes to uh, not ungodly hot in Thailand. Like there's like a hot season, a hotter season. Up north, there's an actual cold season. Here in like central east, it doesn't get that cold, but we're having a cold snap right now. And I am struggling with it. So, sorry for my little like chattering teeth and shape. <laughs> very cold for me. Um, this morning, I was sparring with Yodkin Khan, and uh, I film us, right? So I, I put my camera on a tripod in the corner of the ring, and then uh, I just go and like start it and stop it at the start and stop of each round. And uh, then afterwards I go through and I just find stuff to like turn into stories, like just little clips that I'll put in my stories. And mostly it's just like stuff that I'm working on or like funny little things that I was thinking or uh, you know, observations of what is happening in that clip. I'm like 10, 15 seconds long. But this morning, or I guess this afternoon, when I started like looking through it and make these little stories, uh, there's a part at the beginning where I've like turned on the camera and then I turn around and I have to pick up my gloves off of the ground and then walk to the center of the ring. And so I'm like bending over right in front of the camera. And this is just for me, like this is not, nobody else sees this. But I was like, God damn, like my legs look so strong in this like bent over shot, looking at this like curve of my hamstrings and like my quads look really strong. And I grew up playing soccer and I had really strong legs because I was a halfback. So I was just running all the time. I was like the little jet of the team, just running all the time. And uh, I've been running for Muay Thai for many years. I've been doing Muay Thai for many years. My body is basically by Muay Thai. Like, I do conditioning stuff like push-ups and pull-ups and stuff, but for years I never ever did any kind of weightlifting. And then uh, I had an accident. I got thrown from a horse and uh, I messed up my back <laughs> bad. And I was really, really lucky in every, every sense that it was not a break, it was not a tear, like it was actually just really bad bruising uh, of ligaments and my kidneys <laughs> and my spine a little bit. Uh, so I was laid out like, uh, I was literally not able to sit, like I couldn't sit up, uh, I couldn't stand for any amount of time and I could just barely kind of hobble to the bathroom for like weeks. And then I started being able to just kind of like walk small distances and when I got back to being able to like move my body, um, I started lifting weights because I couldn't train Muay Thai yet, but I thought to myself I'm going to need to like strengthen myself before I get back. Hi honey! Hi, baby. It's this very beautiful dog. But he's not looking too good. Hey, honey. Hey, hey, hey. Stay on the road. He's part cattle dog. I hate so many dogs out here have something very wrong with them. Like, they got hit by a car or a motorbike when they're babies and they have like a broken leg or they've got like parasites and car modes. It's a little bit rough. It's very hard to be a dog in Thailand. Um, so I went into weightlifting and I've, I've weightlifted like throughout my life. Like my oldest, uh, my middle brother, he's like very into, um, exercise and fitness. He was a wrestler in high school. So he was always like doing weightlifting and I would just go with him and like machines are pretty straightforward. Like you just kind of put the pin and like do the thing. Um, and I could do my own free weights, but I was always really afraid of like going up in weight, uh, because I was afraid of doing it wrong. Like, honestly. Um, I give very much credit and respect to people who uh, know how to do things with technique. That's how I feel about people who actually know Muay Thai versus people who like are just teaching it because they need a fitness class and that kind of thing. Like there are people who really, really know how to lift weights properly with technique. And so when I started lifting weight and I'd been doing it for a while and I was getting 
to the point where I was like, I'm afraid to go up because I don't know the proper technique. I was like, I'm just going to hire someone. So I hired this guy, John. He's Thai, but his name's Johnny. Um, and he has been my personal trainer for many months now. I'll do a month with him um, for him to like teach me forms and all this stuff. And then I'll do a month without him to, you know, literally just get the work in. And then I'll uh, start working with him again to like fix things or progress or, you know, go into different trainings and new trainings and stuff like that. So I've been working with him for a while. And so this morning when I saw this image of my legs looking so strong and I can feel that my legs are getting stronger. I can feel my posture is changing. I'm really happy because my roof is much better uh, in which I think that my back chain was just really not very strong before. Um, and I can feel this ability to like stay in space better. And so I was looking at this picture and I'm like, damn, thank you, Johnny, for teaching me how to do, you know, squats and deadlifts and uh, leg extensions and presses and all these different kinds of things. So my legs look really good. Not only is it aesthetic, I can feel how strong they are. And then I was like, also, thank you to me because I'm the one doing all the damn work. So thank you, Sylvie, for doing all of that work. And uh, what was kind of cool about that little conversation, um, other than like thirst trapping myself and being really proud of my legs, uh, is that this actually applies to Muay Thai too. In that I am very, very grateful to my teachers. And I have a lot of teachers because we've been doing the Muay Thai library. That's how I've come in contact with having so many different teachers. Um, I have a lot of different influences and I'm incredibly lucky in that not only have I had, you know, years of training with Master K, years of training with Pernu, years of training um, up at Lana with Den and Dang, but I also now, by some kind of miracle, have years of training not consistently, but at times, with like Karhat and years with Yod Kampan, Diesel Mo I've known for years. Like I really am so fortunate that I've had the opportunity to like continually learn and be taught by these absolutely incredible men. And uh, I say this a lot, and I think this a lot, and I'm very, very grateful for it, and I talk about it a lot, but there's that second part that I thought of with the weightlifting that I don't think of with the Muay Thai, which is, and thank you to me for putting in the work. <laughs> like you have to put in the work as, as inspired as you are by someone or as much as you learn from someone. Uh, if you don't do the thing, you don't have the thing. Like you don't actually become anything if you don't put in the work. And I'm the one who's really putting in the work. So that was like a very rare roundabout way to get to a moment of confidence for me, which, uh, it's very refreshing for me because I don't get that very much. I don't allow that very much. I was laughing pretty hard. Uh, I, a couple of uh, a couple of these vlogs ago, I mentioned that I'm listening to this audiobook. Um, this sci-fi book that's called The Hail Mary Project. It's very funny. It's really really good. Um, but it kind of introduces this idea of like. You think that people or organisms or whatever are like more or less like you. Um, so when you're thinking of like alien species, like what will they have in common with us and what won't they? And you just kind of assume that things are like this. And I was laughing because this goes with like neurodivergence too. Of either you assume that people are exactly like you or you assume that you're the only one that's like this and nobody's like this. And so it's like kind of a relief to learn that other people are like you. Um, so like, I don't know, I saw this thing that was like, why do you have to label everything? And it was answering like, it's important to label things because it allows you to learn that you are not a weird horse, you are a normal zebra. Like, that means something to people. And I had that experience when I discovered that there were different styles in Muay Thai. I didn't know that prior to coming to Thailand. I think a lot of people didn't know that before Kevin and I started really talking about it. And um really, really like putting it out there and people start being like, oh, I see this and I know these people and their names for it and all this stuff. So uh, when I discovered that I was not a failed femur, but actually a pretty successful Muay Cow, that was like a huge deal for me. That was the like, you are not a fucked up horse. You're a very normal zebra kind of thing. And uh, I can't remember why I'm talking about this. Like you, th you think that people think exactly like you. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, um, people ask me, like, 
how did you fight so much? Like, how do you, how do you keep training when you're not motivated? Like all these things that are just like, how do you get this done? And I'm like, oh, do you not have the like crippling anxiety that <laughs> makes you, makes you unable to disappoint people who you've actually never met and have no actual uh, investment in you as a person? Do you not have that? It's that kind of thing. So uh, I am, I'm learning how to kind of uh, work in different methods. You know, you can have, you can have the way that you've always done things which works, like you get the results you want. Um, but you know, your house is also painted in a weird way instead of, you know, a very, very easy, like, oh, there's other ways of doing this kind of thing. So, uh, me trying to figure out how to, <laughs> uh, I, watch it. Is he telling me so little? Let's eat me. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, so, like, motivation is not, is not an important thing. Like, I don't, I don't think that most people are, like, super motivated most of the time for almost anything that they have to continually do. Motivation is nice. Like, like, motivation is cool if you can find ways to be motivated and, like, um, it's kind of like a, a nice seasoning that you can have in things. But you can't rely on motivation just because it's really, really fickle. Uh, and it changes all the time. Like, it's it's really hard to be motivated when you're tired. It's really hard to be motivated when you're, like, down on yourself. And, um, the things that you end up thinking or, like, you know, the, the way that you change over time when you've worked harder and harder at something, um, it's hard to, like, to stay in that, to stay in that phase. Like, the motivation is kind of like a honeymoon phase. And so you can find things to be motivated about rather than the grand picture. Like your motivation is like, oh, I just want to like go get better. That's like a nice motivation. But the more you spend time in something, you might have to really, really fine tune it and be like, I'm really motivated to uh, not take a step back at all today. Like that's a very, very specific thing. That's one of the things that you can kind of like pull into your training, kind of maintain a degree of focus when motivation in a grand sense of like, oh, I'm just having a great time all the time I'm doing this, um, becomes less, I don't know, persistent. Dude, just full on pulled up on the sidewalk. <laughs> all right. Um, I've been all over the place talking on this run cast, so I don't know. It's a natural state of the mind for the mind to go all over the place, and I think that that is true and uh, exhibited by what is happening today. The sun is going down. It's going to get colder. I'm going to be even more cold, uh, so I'm going to go. But thank you guys for watching these, and uh, <laughs> I hope it was interesting. If not, something that you can connect to and, I don't know, maybe have some positives come out of.